In this tutorial, we will see the different commands of Assembly Design Workbench. How engineers do it. Before we start today's video, I would like to ask all my viewers to subscribe to my YouTube channel How Engineers Do It, to share the video among all of your friends, and also hit the bell icon to never miss another update. By assembling the different parts of split muff coupling, as you can see here, this is the assembled mode of uh, the split muff coupling and let's see how we can assemble that. Firstly go to new and select the product and once we select that we will be in the product design workbench and as you can see here all of these options here are frozen. In order to start using all these options we need to firstly insert components. So let's see how we can insert a component in the assembly design workbench. Firstly, before we do anything, rename the product file as split muff study. Now double click and then right click and then go to components, existing component, and then start inserting the different components. Firstly, insert the first component that's the muff, the lower portion and before we do anything it's a good practice to go for edit, move, manipulate and move the component a little away from the origin and then click on OK and then fix that component. Now, insert the second component by going to insert existing component and then muff opposite. Once we insert that, as we have moved and fixed this, all the components will be coming here and we can easily insert or use the component. Now, go to insert, go to edit, move, manipulate and go for Z and move the component. Manipulation is used to move the component without giving any constraint. Now in this case, I will use the custom rotation and I will select the rotation, the axis which I would like to rotate and I will rotate it this way. So this will help us to assemble the components. Now firstly, we will see how we can use the coincide command. Click on the coincide and then click on one and two. Now you could repeat the step by coinciding this hole and this hole here. Now go for the contact constraint and use the contract contact constraint to apply it on the surfaces. Once you have done that, press the control U or else go for edit update. You can see that the upper part has aligned with the lower part according to the constraints that we have applied. Now the next step that you want to follow is to insert the next component. Double click and then go for existing component and then go for inserting a shaft. As you can see the shaft is being inserted here and now as we have done before Let's first adjust by edit, move, manipulate. Before giving the constraints, we will adjust it according to how we are going to assemble it. Let's use the smart move command and constrain the surface and the surface here. and click on OK and control U for update 
Now again use the Smart Move tool to adjust this to this position. Now the next thing that you need to insert is the key. So go for right click, existing component and insert the key. Go for contact constraint and use the contact constraint with this face and this face here and again repeat the contact constraint and use a contact constraint to constrain this face and this face. Finally press the control U button and then you can move the key and adjust it. For example, you want to move in this direction, move and adjust it. Now let's insert the washer, nut and bolt into this. So let's see how we can do that. Go for insert, existing component and then insert the washer. Now use the consonants command. and coincide it with this and then use the contact constraint and then press the control U button to adjust the washer to the correct location. Now use the washer, go for reuse pattern. In this we will see how we can use the reuse pattern. Reuse patterns are used when you want to apply the same constraint and while using, while constraining this we need to follow the patterns that we have used while creating the holes. Come to the washer, go for insert, go for reuse pattern and then go back to the hole pattern that we have used before, click and click on OK. So that automatically inserts all the washers and automatically constrains to all the holes here. In this fashion, you can also insert the square bolt, go for coincidence, coincide that with the hole here and use the contact constraint to use the contact constraint. Now, finally, use the square bolt, go for insert and use the reuse pattern that we have used before. Open up the rectangular pattern, click on OK, that automatically inserts all the parts of square bolt and adjusts itself according to the rectangular pattern that we have created before while creating the parts. Now finally we need to insert square nut. So we have already created that and the nut is right here. Now go for coincidence, 
same method could be could be followed. Now use the contact constraint. And go inside this and go for update. Now, finally, use the reuse pattern, and as we have done before. Open up the rectangular pattern. Oh, that's a problem. So, what we can do in this case is just delete the last constraint, the constant we created. Or else double click on it, click on more, and click on this, go for reconnect, and reconnect it with this, click on OK, and go for update. Let's constrain it once again by going to coincidence and then going for the contact constraint. And then going for the update. And then let's use that. Let's go for this and go for reuse pattern and click on the pattern here and then finally click on OK. So we have completely constrained our split muff coupling by using the different operations of uh, assembly design. So in this tutorial we have almost covered all the operations of uh, assembly so whatever is left out like fixed together angle offsets will be covered in uh, the next tutorial i hope you enjoyed thank you